So Big Ed here. This is going to be part two of the Remington 700 long range build right here. On uh, the first part we put on the TPS steel scope base and uh, and we discovered we had rings also but we discovered our rings were too tall. We had the low TPS rings. These rings right here are the extra low ones or super low ones. Uh, these are measuring 0.82 of an inch right there. And these are the lowest rings TPS sells right here. And they came in this little box right here. They're about $90, $95. The other thing I wanted to point out that came in this little box right here was directions. Um, you can pause this right here if you want to read these directions. But I, I would recommend, you know, for anything, especially something long range precision, I mean, if you're just putting together a 22 and you don't want to read the directions, you got some $10 mounts, yeah, you know, that's fine, I guess. But uh, I would suggest reading the directions for something like this, you know, with a $75 base and $90 mounts and a $300 scope. Um, but I already have. <clears throat> so the first interesting thing about these bases right here, the rings, the base, and, and here's the cap, is that there's a little indexing uh, right there in the base right there. And there's a corresponding one to the cap right there. And basically, those line up. You're going to line up those indexing marks right there. And that side gets tightened down first. And basically, this will act, act like a clamshell. You're going to tighten down the index side first. And then you're going to tighten down the opposite side. And basically, you tighten down the index side. You're going to set your reticle, make sure you're vertical. And then you clamp it down, and it's supposed to hold you know, your reticle in position. So that's pretty cool because... Traditional style rings, you have to do the X, a crisscross pattern, kind of like a cylinder head on a on a on a motor. But so, supposedly these, you don't have to do that with. And this is my first experience with these TPS rings right here. So the other thing I've done is, you know, these will come since they are steel rings. They come, you know, in these little baggies right here, and they have a coating of oil on them. Uh, just wipe off all the oil. You know, you don't want to get oil all over your scope, and you don't need it on an aluminum scope body. And then I put a little bit of my REM oil on there with the Teflon, which I love, and that's a great preservative too. So we'll go ahead right now, we'll just pop a couple of these rings on right here. And basically, <clears throat> one of the big things is, is just, you're gonna have to dry fit anything like this and just kind of fit for alignment. So first thing we'll do, is just put on, usually I'll always start all the way back, and they always kind of seem to set up that way. And then we're gonna put a ring We'll put one right here. I kind I love to get the rings right on top of the, uh, you know, onto the screws. That you know that way all the center of effort is lined up. You know, wiggle them, and these will end up. So then we have our scope right here, and this is the uh, the SWFA straight 12 power right here. Let's go ahead and set this in there. Well, that looks pretty good right now. Um, you always want to keep a little bit of room between the focusing ring, also the front of your cone right here. You know, leave a little bit of room there just in case that prematurely bolt, you know, you don't want to squeeze the scope. There's no reason to do that. But that sits in there real nice. It's already pretty tight, which means there's a lot of surface area contact. And I would expect that from these, the basis of these rings right here. You know, there should be a lot of contact here to make it hard for it to turn. So that looks pretty good. So right now, I'm going to just check check it for uh, eye relief. And basically, what you'll just do then is, you know, you're just going to hold the the scope up to you know your shoulder shoulder the firearm and uh, look for your eye relief. Right. There. So I finished, um, you know, eye reliefing the scope right here. It's pretty good right where it is. And the other thing I'm going to end up doing with this rifle, and this will be a part three, is I'm going to replace the stock right here. And this is the stock Remington uh, 700 of uh, Armit stock. <clears throat> and we're going to end up probably going with a HS precision stock. So this might have to be moved again, but you know, hopefully it'll stay pretty close to the, you know, maybe it'll stay the same, we'll see. So I'm happy where it is right now. And uh, TPS sent me this bag of screws right here. Um, you know, in an Allen wrench, we got nine screws in there. Hopefully we'll only need eight. So now that we everything lines up, everything fits right, let's go ahead and uh, Loctite I'm on for good. And for Loctite, basically, 
you know, we have the little blue compound right here. It's a thread locker. Really common stuff. Get it at a hardware store or Home Depot. Basically, we're going to just put a drop. And the torque specs, just one little drop on the threads. That's perfect. And the torque specs on these are 65 inch pounds. And we do not have a torque wrench that small. I have a big one, but not one that small. So we're basically just going to go ahead and finger tight it. And you want to wiggle it, make sure it's seated on there. Now. Take a look at it. It's on there. And basically, I'll just go finger tight with this. No need to over tighten. These are steel. So they're going to, uh, let's see here, we're one, two, two holes back on the front. And just one little drop of uh, Loctite on there. Wiggle it around, make sure it's seated on there. It's very, these are very tight fitting. I think that's a wrap. And basically, I do a lot of motor work, so I'm pretty good with torquing things and feeling how good they are. So, I'm going to lay our scope back in here. This is right in the middle here. And we'll go ahead and just center up the reticle again, but we look pretty good. So, we have uh, our bases tightened. So, let's go ahead and put the caps on. And again, you'll see we have the uh, little indexing mark over here. We'll go ahead and drop that on. There's the indexing mark over on this one. All right, so let's go ahead and get the uh, Loctite out now. <clears throat> we'll start doing one of them at a time. So just again, one, you don't need much. Put it towards the bottom too, because that's where it's going to seat. That's where you want it to grab is the bottom of the, uh, of the base. Right back in there. One little drop right towards the bottom. One thing I should invest in is a <clears throat> A kind of uh, some sort of bench, a, a gun vice. I just don't know what kind I want yet because I do just do a lot of different work on a lot of different types of firearms. So we're snugged up there. So we're going to go ahead and tighten them. They're tight now. Let's go for the rears. Remember, we're tightening down the in indexing side first so we can get the clamshell function on these. Make sure there's problems. And you know, I would uh, definitely use the little tools they provided. The good thing about using little tools is that you can really feel the torque and feel what the, what the uh, pieces are doing. So we'll get and torque each one. So that's it. So our clamshell supposedly is, is intact now. So let's just check the reticle and see if our reticle is still vertical. We'll go ahead and fasten her down and that should be a wrap. So our reticle held vertical, so we're going to go ahead now and tighten down the, the back sides. We'll go ahead and we'll take out, just to speed this up, the direction said that once you tighten these, you're going to have 20 one thousandths of an inch left. So that's basically, take a zero off each one, that'll be two one hundredths or one fiftieth of an inch. So that's going to be a visible gap. That's okay, that's within specifications. Just, you know, they leave a little, mail them a little undersized just in case uh, for manufacturers, differences, because, you know, some scope companies will make the tube 30 millimeters and then they'll powder coat it or put their finish on it and then it's not 30 millimeters anymore. It's a little bigger. Again, I'm putting a little drop of Loctite. Sorry, I didn't do that in the camera. A little bit of Loctite on each one, just up right on the bottom. So that's where you want it to get, you know, that's where the it's going to get tight. And that's where you want the hold. 
a little on the front one, again right on the bottom of the threads. <clears throat> right on the bottom here. Let's go ahead and tighten these up. So now we're going to go ahead and we'll put a little torque onto these. I'm just going to go finger tight. We'll start out with the uh, just a little bit. And the crossing pattern that ends the directions didn't say anything about crossing powder crossing pattern. And that makes sense because the scope is actually not turning. The, supposedly the scope body is basically making firm contact with the base of the rings and the caps are just clamping them down and it's not rotating so it's not as important I don't think to do the crisscrossing pattern with these new style rings right here that feels pretty good I think that's a wrap so uh, the other thing I have too I'm going to save this for future videos. We have the Harris bipod right here. And we're going to go ahead and uh, th wait, wait, wait till we have the good stock and we'll throw that on the good stock. But that's a wrap right there with the, uh, and we'll let you just rotate the rifle around for you folks. And look at, so, you know, the scope's still up <clears throat> high up off the barrel, but that's because though any one piece mount is going to, you know, and that's a 20 MOA mount right there. You know, so basically what they're going to have to do to get the 20 minutes of angle built into that is you're going to have to uh, lift up the back of it and add more material and even to the front of it. And it's going to be more than a one piece, you know, than, than, than single piece mounts uh, as far as the height off the uh, scope, the scope off the barrel. But that's definitely a lot better. And I'll throw in that a quick clip of what it used to look like. And basically I saved a tenth of an inch dropping the, you know, with these new rings right here and it was the right way to do it but uh, yeah I'm very happy with the way this came out so we'll go ahead or I think we're gonna test fire this zero the scope laser bore sight and we'll uh, come back once we got the stock in possession and make a third video of this uh, rifle build up right here yeah one other quick thing that's very important and I already checked this I did it off camera when I uh, was lining up the reticle you can see your uh, 20 one thousandths of an inch right there gap is you want to check out bolt clearance right here so we'll go ahead it's pretty good I'm happy really happy with that um, this whole setup so far and eventually another upgrade I'm gonna put a better bolt handle on this but uh, this is this is good for now that's that's good clearance right there so but thanks for watching folks finished uh, <clears throat> mounting the base on there and this is all just dry fitted right now the bottom of the scope rings but you can see the clearance of the barrel and the scope right now and how uh, high that scope is off that barrel also it's too high I'm not getting a good cheek weld there looking through that scope so yeah I think we're gonna have to return these bases and go for the extra lows but I just wanted to get that on there so this is not all the time easy and straightforward